We said that for two systems A and A prime to be in uh, equilibrium, they must have the same average energy uh, per atom in the previous uh, discussion. So remember, uh, in the final uh, thermal equilibrium situation, we must have the same average energy per atom or per molecule uh, at equilibrium. Now, there is a macroscopic parameter uh, that we assign to each system uh, that is going to be related to this average energy per atom, and that's called absolute temperature. So, if uh, you have the same average energy per atom in the two systems, that means they have the same absolute temperature. So, uh, we characterize each system by a parameter T we call absolute temperature and absolute temperature uh, it is related to the average energy per atom or per molecule in the system. So when the system reaches equilibrium, the equilibrium condition is that the temperature of the system A must be equal to the temperature of the system A prime. So this is for systems A and A prime. Uh, if we want to measure the temperature of the system, there is a macroscopic system called a thermometer and it has a macroscopic parameter which changes uh, when the system absorbs uh, or releases heat. So a thermometer is a special macroscopic system uh, Basically, uh, one of the macroscopic parameters changes when the system absorbs or releases heat and this parameter is called thermometric parameter so that parameter is thermometric parameter we show it with theta and here's an example. We have a liquid whose uh, temperature we would like to measure. So uh, we have two possible scenarios for this. Here we're using a mercury uh, thermometer. And here is a resistive thermometer. And what is the difference between the two? For the mercury thermometer, we have the length of the column, the length of the uh, mercury that is trapped inside this uh, capillary tube uh, is basically changing with temperature. When the system absorbs heat, the length increases. When it releases heat, the length decreases. 
So this thermometric parameter theta is equal to L length of mercury column. In the case of resistive thermometer, it's going to be the resistance that's going to change with temperature. Uh, so we put this mercury thermometer in the liquid and when the system reaches uh, equilibrium the temperature of the liquid will be equal to the temperature of the mercury thermometer but the temperature of the mercury thermometer is related to its thermometric parameter theta so we're going to have a reading of the temperature of the mercury thermometer by looking at uh, the value of the length of the column of the mercury so we will be able to tell the temperature of the liquid with respect to the mercury thermometer and similarly we apply a constant voltage across this resistor and we measure the current that flows through it uh, and we also measure the voltage that we're applying so divided by a V divided by I is going to give us the resistance R and this resistance will change with temperature so when the temperature of the liquid is equal to the temperature of the resistor we're going to have a value a corresponding value of resistance that we can probe uh, using our uh, setup so the temperature that we report um, for the system is um, basically going to be related to the thermometer so we have temperature um, of the liquid as read uh, by the mercury thermometer so we will have temperature with respect to the mercury thermometer and this reading will be uh, theta thermometric parameter of the mercury thermometer or we can have it with respect to the resistive thermometer and its reading will be theta r we, it's the resistance of the resistive thermometer so uh, since we have temperature absolute temperature that is related to the average energy per atom or molecule and at equilibrium we must have uh, the temperature of uh, two systems in thermal equilibrium to be the same um, we can say that by looking at the value of the thermometric parameter uh, for example in the mercury thermometer we can tell what will happen when the two systems A and A prime are brought into thermal contact. So what do I mean by that? So if I have for uh, systems, two systems A and A prime that are initially isolated from each other, I read the temperature of the system uh, A initial value so A initial value thermometric parameter as read by the mercury thermometer if this is equal to the thermometric parameter that I read initially for system A prime uh, this is going to imply that uh, in thermal contact with each other there's going to be no heat flow uh, we're going to have the heat absorbed by system a equal to the heat absorbed by system a prime to be zero on the other hand if i have an initial reading of the thermometric parameter uh, for the mercury thermometer uh, for system a larger than the initial reading for uh, a prime system then in thermal contact what will happen uh, because A is now the hot system and A prime is now the cold system 
heat will flow from the hot system to the cold system so the heat absorbed by system A will be negative it will be releasing heat to the primed system and heat absorbed by the primed system will be positive so it will be heat absorbed a net heat absorbed by system A okay so to summarize uh, we the important criterion for uh, deciding whether or not heat will a net heat will flow between two systems is uh, the distribution of energy so remember we always want to have at equilibrium the most random distribution of energy between molecules so that means the total energy divided by the number of molecules uh, the average energy per atom uh, must be uh, the same so if you br bring two systems together if you make a thermal contact between them if the average energy per atom or molecule is already the same because the collisions between the atoms and molecules will not uh, lead to a net flow of energy between the systems the systems will stay in equilibrium and we characterize this situation by a parameter called absolute temperature which is related to the average energy per atom or molecule and at equilibrium the absolute temperatures of the two systems must be the same in order to measure the temperature of a system we use a thermometer a thermometer has a thermometric parameter that changes when its temperature changes when it absorbs or releases heat it's the length of the mercury column it's the resistance of the resistive thermometer it could be the color of an object etc there are many physical uh, parameters that can be dependent on the temperature and so uh, if we measure the temperature of the system using the mercury thermometer we get a reading of the temperature from the thermometric parameter theta hg if we measure it by looking at the resistance of this resistive thermometer it will be thermometric parameter theta r that we will be measuring and for two systems that were initially isolated if we measure the thermometric parameters the temperatures with respect to the mercury thermometer initially if the readings are the same that's going to imply in thermal contact no net heat flow will occur if the readings are different uh, the higher reading is the hot uh, one the lower reading is the cold system therefore the heat will flow from the hot to the cold system hot system will be releasing heat cold system will be absorbing heat until equilibrium at equilibrium we're going to have the same value final reading of the uh, thermometric parameter from the mercury thermometer should be the same in the two systems.